it. Okay. Thanks for being here, everyone. I appreciate the time. I'm excited to see a, a good group of us um, today. We might have a few more people joining us here in the next few minutes. Um, but really, this um, Lunch and Discuss is very casual. Um, I have a few kind of starter questions, but also I'm willing to kind of, we can take the conversation um, wherever it needs to go. Um, I know we have some people on here maybe who weren't at conference too, and just kind of want to hear what people um, gained from the conference. So I think that's great. Um, if you have any questions or things that you would want to know from people, feel free. Um, I'll leave some time at the end for <clears throat> other people to ask questions as well. Um, but yeah, so obviously um, we had a very good group um, show up for Indiana and Birmingham. Um, thank you for those of you who made the trek. I know some of us had some some travel delays along the way, so I'm glad everybody made it safely. Um, and really, it was super encouraging just to see such a large crowd of us there and being able to cheer on Madison. And you guys were also just supportive of them, but also of each other. And it was really, really great to get to see that. So um, I know it's a sacrifice financially um, and, you know, just time-wise to take that time to go to the conference. But I do think, or I hope that it was very refreshing um, for you all. It was, I know it felt that way for our team. So um, so with that said, um, I'm going to kind of start out with an easy question. You can either, I would love to, if you unmute it and want to talk, but if you don't want to, you can always throw it in the chat as well. Um, but I'll kind of start out with an easy question and just tell me about maybe, um, a fun moment that someone had throughout the conference. So whether it was like in a session or maybe outside of a session, something fun that you did. Um, but yeah, something that you left that was just you were like, that was really a fun time. <laughs> Anyone can start. A little together mode here. I don't know why it's doing that. I don't know if anyone else sees that, but okay. Maybe it's just me. Anyway. Anyone? <laughs> I know you guys had fun. I guess we'll talk. Oh. Okay. Either one. Okay. Mackenzie or Missy. <laughs> um, I enjoyed um, seeing the um, placemaking in Birmingham, just walking about at night, even though it was, there weren't any people or cars, which was really odd. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> but um, just seeing what they've done with that overpass um, with the, yeah, all kinds of something for everyone. Um, that was yeah. some, interesting place making and then um went out to the pepper place um that had the different artisan restaurants and oh, cool. uh, ice cream and retail so that was kind of really neat and a fun experience it was really lively out there yeah but it was just neat That's to awesome explore. did some mountain biking that was fun too so yeah nice time in Birmingham <laughs> yeah I love that um Mackenzie did you want to I was I was going to say the same thing about the placemaking with those blocks of just all the different things the dog park and the seating area the food truck alley thing I thought that was really a cool use of space and their wayfinding their signage I took lots of pictures of that because I love how they color coded like each section so you knew yeah. exactly where you were I thought it was just an interesting way to go about it and I, I definitely brought that back to my board it was a, it was a cool cool way to do it. I love that. Yeah. Anne also said in the chat, she loved the excursions, the overpass placemaking, um, plus the visiting the museum, which was really amazing, which is super cool. I know some of you did um, uh, like the field experiences. So if you haven't been to Now Conference before, um, one of the things they usually offer is a wide variety of different kind of field trips you can basically um, add on to your conference registration if you want to, um, and you get to go kind of experience some other communities around wherever the host um, uh, state or community is. So um, so that, that was, I'm glad some of you were able to to get over to those as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's really funny because we've, we've been talking a lot about how, and I'm glad you mentioned it, Missy, but like, it was really interesting that like, there weren't a lot of people out in like Birmingham and I don't know, like, I don't know exactly the reason why it was really, they did have some really cool parts of their city, but it was, that was really interesting to us too. I, I felt like Indy was like 
Indianapolis is like booming compared to that. I was like, I feel like we live in like a really booming city compared to the amount of people that were um, walking around Birmingham, but who knows? So um, Lexi said, I had a really fun time doing the Main Street song. Yes, Lexi, that was amazing. It was out of my comfort zone, but a really cool way to have a shared experience with fellow Main Streeters. Yeah. So again, for if anyone wasn't there, one of the things they did this year was they literally created a like anthem for Main Street. And they brought in this um, woman who she does a lot of like theater and kind of storytelling through song. Um, And so, yeah, Lexi was in the like the choir, like the group who like sang along with them. And it was really great. So I'm proud of you, Lexi. That's amazing. And it looked so fun, honestly. Um, And then Anne also said the trails activated around the trains were amazing. Yeah. That I feel like they had a lot of really unique, the the setup of their city is really unique. And so the ways that they were kind of finding ways to highlight that, I think, um, was really cool. So um, I know for for me, I really enjoyed the the sloth furnace factory that we had the big bash in. Um, It was really, really beautiful. Plus, it was just like beautiful weather that evening. So like with the sun setting and like, just some of the cool like art that they even had as you're like walking through the the factory. I thought that was really, really fun. But anyone else on just something fun that happened? No? Okay. Well, feel free. If you think of something along the way, you can always just throw it in the chat or unmute. Um, okay. So Um, digging in a little bit to uh, the education side of it and kind of what we all learned. Um, I would just love to maybe hear um, from some people about maybe a favorite session that you had. Um, Oh, Abby said celebrating Madison's GAMSA award. Yes, that was very fun. (laughs) I think all of us were, um, had a blast getting to cheer and just be excited. So very good point. Um, but yeah, I know we all went to a variety of different sessions. There was a lot of options to go to this year. Um, so I feel like I didn't even see as many of you like as normally I feel like I have in the past at sessions. So that's hopefully good. We all covered a lot of different areas and we can share knowledge with each other. But, um, but yeah, I'd love to hear if you had a favorite session, um, what maybe was the topic of that session? Why did it kind of stick out to you and why has it kind of like, why would you consider it your favorite, I guess? And feel free to unmute or just throw it in the chat. Um, Junior Main Street, the session I went to, that was something our board wanted to do anyways um, to start that, but we weren't really sure where to start. And yep. learning that they are utilizing it as a club through the local high school and as an internship with the downtown businesses sparked a lot of um, excitement for our board. I actually have a young girl who's graduating this year going to Trine, going to be a freshman in college, who is going to kind of spur that since she has a connection with Angola High School already. So we're really, really excited to get that going in the fall and sit down and have some meetings to work with both the college and the local high school to get a junior Main Street going. I love that. That is really cool. That's a that's a really cool way to set it up. I've never really thought of it that way, but it was interesting. They even said like it was basically to get them, the business owners, more social media content to use the kids as more as marketing, but then mm-hmm. it became way more than that. So I think I think it was a great use of that partnership, especially for kids who maybe not be able to work yet, but getting yep. them some on-the-job training before they apply for jobs. So yeah, that was, that's- that was an interesting one. I loved it. Well, and I think that's nice for communities, too, that I know some people maybe who already have an established like mayor's youth council or something Mm -hmm. like, you know, sometimes they can also. But like, I think it's nice because that establishes something more specific that can also, yeah, help them help the Main Street organization, you know, all of that good stuff. So absolutely. That's awesome. Um, Mackenzie, it looks like uh, Kristen was asking if you can share that info. If Kristen, if you maybe want to drop your your email or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that way I, McKenzie I just can... asked him to email Josh, I believe from Sweetwater Nashville was the, okay. the main street um, that was doing it. And I just asked him to email me all that stuff for digital copies. So I can for sure forward that information. Perfect. 
That would be great. Um, who else? Favorite session? Something that stuck out? Um, I was going to say, I think this year it was pretty neat. But I felt like they focused on mental health of like executive directors a lot more. Um, mm. I attended two different sessions. One was about just overall mental health of directors. I don't know the exact title. And then um, the other one was some round tables with long-term directors. And I know I've only been with this role like for three years, but still long enough to, I guess, feel the wear yeah. and tear um, of Main Street communities. And those more than anything re-energized me. Just to, I think it helps bring you back to the forefront of like why we all do these jobs, right? I mean, I know at times it can be really um, wearing on, you know, a lot of different aspects of it, but um, just hearing and thinking about what is our passion, what made us do this and how to work through delegation and, and different things of that sort was neat. But another one that I really enjoyed was more digital content and less time. Um, it really shifted my focus on how we're focusing on our marketing efforts within just our Main Street program as a whole. So um, they talked a lot about, um, you know, utilize a platform that you own more than relying solely on Facebook um, mm -hmm. and talking about, you know, utilize your website, create those blog posts, use a newsletter, and then take that content and be using it on Facebook, LinkedIn, like all the things um, yep. to where you're repurposing it, you're scattering it out enough to hit it a few times. Um, and it just, you know, I know from our Main Street program, we probably rely very heavily on Facebook and we need to do a better job of relying on our website. Um, so it, that was a really, really good course. I got a lot from that. I love that. I think that's like, that's such a good point. Like there's a lot of ways that you can be able to save time for you guys. Cause I know social media is one of those. I know when we're out talking to you guys, you're like, this is just, this takes so much time to create all this content, you know, and like, we don't have time to do this, you know? So it's like, it's nice if you can really focus in and do some of it well and focus on what's going on to your site. And then, like you said, being able to then use that other places and save yourself some, yeah, some time. That's, that's awesome. Um, Anne in the chat said, um, the booms tracker, um, return on emotion, and then the policies and procedures sessions were kind of some of her favorites. Um, I also went to the policies and procedures one, which um, that one was really helpful. It was very practical, and they gave us literally like a fill-in policy and procedure guide. <laughs> so if uh, if anyone needs that, you need a little update on your your organization's policies and procedures, just let me know, and I'm happy to to send that. But she really went through also kind of why the importance, um, what well, you know, the importance of having those in a written document. Um, that people can easily access from your board or whoever. Um, and she really dug into that as well. So um, Lexi was saying return on emotion was my favorite. Did anyone else go to return on emotion that wants to unmute and talk about it? I, I didn't go to that I, one. I can talk about it, Abby, because I love it. Right. Yes. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll undo my camera so you can kind of see this grid picture. You can see it. Yep. They gave us a little worksheet. We we always are measuring our numbers on return on investment, but it doesn't really say if that event that brought all those people, did they enjoy it? Did they love mm -hmm. it? How are we measuring our emotion about what we're doing? And for the most part, then we also looked at our, um, you know, our mission and vision statements and are we incorporating joy and some of these other things that, you know, really we're, we are about spreading emotion we want people to fall in love with our communities and that's a really neat take on it and she actually has this little worksheet to kind of see are we gaining joy trust and um I think a belonging in our world and so it was just a whole new viewpoint on what we're already doing a lot of us are doing it we might not be saying it or celebrating in that same way but it's a nice way to take a look at are we actually doing it so that was really cool and then um that booms tracker if anybody main street america is making that available and it's free so there's other um i think pro, i think when i went to the um there are other opportunities that you might pay for that people host but main street's making this available um 
And I think the hope is once we get our data filled in about our downtown communities and their buildings and their vacancies, that they can use that data to actually try to get more funding for housing, downtown housing, and that they can use it in ways to help us. Um, but it it doesn't look like it's necessarily easy. I did then reach out to Maestro to see if they're talking to one another to make sure that if we do put all the effort into Boomstracker, will we be able to upload it into Maestro? And they're at least talking. So right now, hopefully it won't duplicate um, efforts or like put double um, entries in there, but it is uh, interesting and we I'm hopeful that you know, that they continue communicating so that if we do decide to move forward and fill in our data, that it'll be um, seamless. That'd be great. <laughs> yes, I love that. Thank you for asking that question of them, because I think that's important. Um, and also, our June webinar is with Mike Poe from Main Street America. And so he's going to talk a little bit about a little bit about the housing studies that they've done. He's going to try to kind of simplify some, break, break some, it's a lot of different pieces of that study, but kind of break it down since it's only an hour webinar. Um, he'll kind of dig in a little bit to that, but he also is going to talk some about the booms tracker and some some other things. So definitely join that um, or if someone from like your EV or design committee can be on that webinar, I think that'll be a really a good one um, in June. So um and I love the return on emotion too. I think that's something that like, even as Abby and Andrea and I were kind of talking about some reflections from, from the conference, you know, I felt like there was a really big emphasis this time about talking about, like you were saying to Janelle, like mental health and addressing loneliness, which like, if you guys didn't hear, our office has just put out a grant to help address um, the, the loneliness um, epidemic that's happening in, in our country. And so, um, you know, and also just, the ways that Main Street can play such a pivotal role in that because you all are creating spaces of joy and connection and for your community members. And so it's helpful to also come back to that at the end of the day, like when we are having hard days where like our work is hard, um, but also knowing like the work you're doing is like literally impacting people's health um, and their, you know, well-being. So there was a lot of sessions on that, which I really appreciated that they they focused on. So um, who else? Other favorite sessions, things that you learned and want to share with the group? I like the session on the first 16 feet. So 16 feet up on the building, 16 feet out from the building, just really mm. concentrating on that area because that's where your people are going to interact. And that's where it's going to maybe draw people into the retail sh stores or the restaurants. Um, yep. So where they can experience downtown and um yeah so i really loved loved that um session and they gave a lot of examples on on what you could do so it's mm -hmm. my favorite. i love that that's great um I, oops oh, go ahead. Um, sorry yeah no i was just gonna say um andrea and i attended the coordinator meetings prior to the conference actually starting. And um, we got to listen to, her name is Kristen Grogan, um, but her company is called Gen Y Communications. Um, and she really has studied a lot on like the different um, generations. And she was, first of all, very funny, like her, her presentation style but what really fascinated me was like the breakdown of like generations she so she broke them down but then broke them down further um you know you always hear like oh the the baby boomer generation but the baby boomer generation is actually like broken up into baby boomers and and then flower children <laughs> um because of like their life experience experiences um obviously the 50s to 60s there were things happening different than the 40s and 50s um but the the thing that really resonated with me and i i want to pass along to you guys is if you do not have millennials and gen z as part of your organizations you really need to like focus on those are the people you need to start recruiting um because within the next you know, 20 to 25 years, they're 81% of our population is, is those two groups. So really looking at, you know, how can you get them involved? What are they interested in? Um, was really, you know, fascinating for me. They're already, I mean, 
millennials and Gen Z are already the biggest population. So really focusing on what drives them and gets them involved. I love that. Thanks, Abby. I just want to add, um, just since I was also at that, that Kristen has been working with a couple other states on um, generational fundraising and some other different things that are specific to nonprofits within that kind of generational lens and generational volunteers. Um, so I'm not sure. I think she has a pretty good blog that might be worth checking out. Um, but yeah, it's it's a interesting topic for sure. So, and then I think Janelle, you were talking and then I cut you off, so. No, it's okay. My signal's okay. probably a little bit delayed anyways, but um, one other one that I just wanted to mention was our board chair visited um, Boards on the Rise um, on Wednesday. And we thought that one was really, really valuable. Um, we're already kind of implementing um, some of the suggestions that they had there. Um, one of the biggest ones was, um, we need to do a better job about developing our committees anyways. Um, but they discussed that your board potentially meeting like every other month in, in the months that you don't meet as a board per se, you're meeting with committees. So one thing that we've talked about through our executive committee is those committee meetings looking a little bit different as well. So we're still gathering as a board. You still have time to meet and approve your financials in the beginning, but then inviting those committees to meet during your regular scheduled board meeting time. So you're not trying to herd cats as an executive director um, to know, you know, what times everybody's going to be there. It's still a set um, schedule and doing a better job of having, you know, our board members, you know, be a chair of every single committee. And it also helps to divide it out to where if we're all meeting at the same time, that way one board member's not doing it all, you know? Um, yep. So that was really, really good feedback and something that I felt like was pretty easy for us to implement as well. I love that. That's great. I think like I was hearing a lot of feedback from a lot of the sessions, especially some of the organization um, sessions about, you know, boards or volunteer recruitment of like just finding some creative ways to address some of these, like, you know, uh, some of the issues of, you know, board members, maybe disengaged board members just because like they have a lot of stuff going on. So I know one thing we probably talked about too, but like, you know, a husband and a wife sharing a seat on the board or like, you know, just things like that, um, you know, ways to help make sure that, you know, you can get the capacity you all need so that you have boards that are support and committees that are supportive, but like making it work also with, um, you know, re recognizing that people have do have lives and then lots of other things going on outside of their role as a board member or committee member. So there's a balance there for sure. Um, who else? Favorite session? Something that stuck out to you? I'll go. Um, and I joining a little bit late, so I'm not sure if some of these have already been talked about, um, but I like to pick a one that is just kind of fun and um, and it might be helpful to you in Auburn. So or anybody who's working on like the junior Main Street program, but I'm going to put in the chat the link to this guide. I went to quilting on the street where their Main Street program had a three day or it may have been four day camp around design thinking. Did we already talk about this? Nope. No. Okay, cool. Um, and so it was a way they targeted middle school students. Um, and it was in Sharpsburg, Kentucky, which is like, I think the community is maybe a thousand people. So it's really small, but they partnered with their extension office to do this um, and got a grant for it. But um, they really, the first day they focused on design thinking and street design, and then it culminated in an end product. They literally just drew um, a quilt, kind of quilt pattern. So they talked about like the historic kind of implication of quilting, and they had um, a community member who was a quilter. She was in her 90s, and this was like the last thing she did before she passed away, but like brought a bunch of quilts in and like shared about quilting as an activity with um, these middle school students. So it's really cool. Um, and I shared the toolkit so it could be easily replicable um, in your communities. So that was probably one of my favorite feel good ones. And um, man, as a parent who's looking for camps, like 
I love camps um, that are about Main Street. So, um, and then the other one that I really loved, and these would be good models to, to look at, but in Hilton Village, Virginia, um, they are becoming a disability friendly community. And um, it really started when one of their community members has a son that is in a power wheelchair and trying to get him up his first job. So he works for a business on Main Street and he um, it's literally like DoorDash with his power wheelchair um, and that kind of like grew that culture of um, creating disability employer friendly um kind of a main street with their um, their district. So um, I actually talked to her after afterwards and we're hoping to like maybe bring her in next year for one of these calls because it was just, it was a really cool um, session. So I'll shut up now and let somebody else talk. <laughs> no, you're good. That's awesome. I love that. I think that that was another thing that, you know, when Abby and Andrea and I were kind of reflecting, it felt like there was also just a lot of sessions on just like accessibility in general to our communities, whether that is, you know, um, looking at, yeah, people with physical disabilities or just being an inclusive and welcoming community. Um, I think all of us went to some really powerful sessions that helped kind of tell that story. And it goes back to the, what I was saying earlier with the loneliness and the, you know, addressing, bringing people together so that they can connect and feel safe in our communities is like such a vital role, I think, that we can play. So. Um, I really like that, but what well, one thing that I heard about and I want to attend, I would never want to plan this. <laughs> so if you want to plan it, I'll attend it. <laughs> um, but uh, I went to a session called Celebrating with Science in Los Alamos, New Mexico. They do this; they call it Discovery After Dark. So it's basically taking like fun science fair projects that you kids did and having adults do them and they like set them up in businesses and it's adults only no kids and so it's just like a night of like experiencing your childhood science fair and also there might be cocktails along the way <laughs> I love that that's amazing who else? We're talking about, if anyone just joined, we're talking about one of our favorite, if you had a favorite session, something that really stuck with you. Um, yeah. While people are thinking, um, we've heard some good ones so far, but my, I think if I was to pick one that probably, it's hard because I think there was one that was a little more practical that I really enjoyed, which was the real estate on Main Street one. I know that's something that, you know, as you know, I come to some of your communities and I've done fundraising training and stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to find unique, different ways we can help um, provide ideas about how to bring income in for your organizations. And I do think real estate is a, a viable potential way that Main Street organizations can bring in some income. That being said, it's obviously not easy. It takes a lot of work. And there is, you know, it's funny because one of the guys in the session was kind of like, this isn't that hard. Just do it, you know. And then there was another guy that was like, it's a little hard sometimes. <laughs> so maybe it's, you know, don't make it sound so easy. But, um, but you know, it was nice because there was a wide variety of people who spoke on the panel. So, you know, there was one larger community where they were literally, their budget was like $30 million because they ran an entire apartment complex in their downtown and made tons of revenue off of it. There was another community, though, that was smaller, I think maybe 5,000 people or so. And they made like, I want to say like 100, maybe 130,000 or so um, in income from having a couple of historic buildings in their downtown that they rented out. One was like, I think, an event space. Like they, they did a lot of different stuff with it. Um, and so it was really cool just to hear some of their like lessons learned. And I took a lot of notes. So if that's something that your organization is like talking about, or maybe the city is like, I know some of you have gotten buildings donated to you from the city or, you know, and they kind of broke down all the different financing. They got really into the details about how they financed some of these things. Um, I'm happy to send you some of those notes because I thought it was really interesting. Um, and then I really enjoyed, and I know that uh, Emily was in this one with me, but was the like building civic infrastructure um, session. And it's funny, Emily, because I've like quoted what you said in that about how like Newcastle, the people of Newcastle kind of thinking like we don't deserve nice things. And like, but that whole session was really a conversation of like all the attendees in the session and really just talking about like, how are we, how do we get stuff done? Like in community work, and how do we work with all of these different partners to really move 
the needle and actually yeah get get the things done we want to get done and so there was a lot of different conversations happening. I can't even begin to summarize all the different things we kind of touched in that. Um, but it was it was really cool just to hear different people from all different kinds of communities, um, some of their struggles, the way that they were approaching how to kind of tackle building that infrastructure, um, you know, connecting, you know, one of the things I quoted was like connecting the dots, like we're community social workers, you know, like we're, we're the ones helping kind of bring things together as Main Street organizations. So um, there's a lot of different other pieces, but I see Emily has raised her hand. So Emily, please jump in, <laughs> share. Yeah, so that was the session I was going to mention too. I mean, I went to a couple of really great practical um, marketing sessions that I've been implementing things, but the one that has stuck with me was that civic engagement, um, civic infrastructure session. And um I, one thing I have noticed in my short time with Main Street is there seems to be kind of a, a growing dichotomy between urban Main Streets and rural Main Streets and, and what their goals are. But that session that we were in really was a very unifying session, probably because it was a conversation. Uh, but it, it was encouraging to see that even though our goals and what our projects often look like um, are very different, at the end of the day, we're all still just just trying to get people to believe in themselves, um, take risks, all of those things. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that's what made it so powerful was like, because yeah, some similar thing, like, I feel like I, I have felt that divide for sure of like, oh, well, we don't, we can't relate with you at all, because you're an urban community, or you're a rural community. Um, and obviously, yes, that's true in some ways, for sure. But I think that that was at the end of the day, like community work is community work and building civic infrastructure, whether you're a Main Street organization, or you work for some other community organization. Um, it, it's, it's really difficult. And like, there's, it's the same challenges across the board, um, you know, with that. So I agree. It was, it was really cool. Um, looks like in the chat, um, Lexi was saying she didn't remember what session it was, but there was a board that was very intentional with thinking through how they were kind of showing up for their community by having Maslow's hierarchy of needs next to them at every meeting. And they tagged a different need to every single thing that they did. So housing downtown was a physiological need of shelter. Safety might include employment with businesses. Um, Self-actualization would be volunteering for your board. So it was just an interesting lens to layer on top of what you're already doing um, and resonated with with Lexi and kind of made her feel more fulfilled in the work that she does, which is awesome, Lexi. I think that's that's a really I've never heard that like way of looking at it. So that's really cool. Um, who else? Anyone else with a favorite session or something that just stuck out to you that even if you heard it in like a plenary session or talk, just talking to somebody. Um, just making sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, well, if something comes to your head, just, just again, you can always uh, unmute or send it in the chat, but um, one of the things that I think is great about this conference is that you get to meet a lot of different people, sometimes even people from your own state that you didn't know before you went to the conference. Um, so just curious if anyone wanted to speak to that. Did anybody meet anybody new from a whole other state or community or even country? There were some other people from other countries there. Um, or uh, did you meet someone even from our own network that maybe you made a new connection with and that's been encouraging or beneficial. While you guys are thinking, I will talk so you can have a minute to think. Um, but we always, we do the, Andrea and Abby and I always do the Dr. Downtown booth just for fun. Cause it's like, and I, I found that from the past couple of years of us doing it, I meet just like such interesting, cool people from different communities that um, again, kind of it's very unifying because I feel like it reminds me of like we're all we're all tackling the same issues here. Like this is not, you know, just because like 
you know, even like I had somebody from California um, talking to me and like she lived on like a beach, like a coast com- coastal community. And in my head, I was like, That's, that must be heaven. Um, but, you know, she was dealing with all the same things that like I was telling her all the different resources we give you guys for different issues with our, you know, issues with organization or whatever. And she was like, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. Can you like send me all of those? Like that will really help. And so, yeah, I just thought that was really cool. Just getting to to hear from a lot of different people. But um, Heather said, Kristen from Wabash Main Street is my new BFF. Oh, I love that. That's amazing. That makes my heart happy. <laughs> everybody <laughs> I love that sweet and helpful I knew no one so I appreciated that <laughs> yes yes I always love like especially yeah, if you go to come to the conference alone like finding somebody else to kind of to hang out with and be able to yeah get to know is great I know I don't think she's on the call but I will I'm going to speak for um Allison who's the executive director for Greensburg Main Street um she told me that she like she came up by herself and the first I think the first night she met like three other women that I think were from if I remember correctly they were from like all different states maybe there was a couple of them that were from the same state and she said they like instantly all became like so close and they hung out the whole week and they like went to sessions together and shared ideas even though their communities like looked kind of different they still there was a lot that they could kind of like collaborate on um and so I thought that was really really cool but anyway who else anybody else meet anyone or connect with anyone new that was a cool connection Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I met so many people. I think I just was a chatterbox. I, I loved it. Um, I met from Indiana, the new main street that they're putting together on, I'm going to say it wrong, Mountain South, which is a collaborative multi-city. Um, it's along um, a railroad track, I think down in Southern Indiana. I don't know if they're on with us today. Mountain um, South. Yes. Yes. And um, so I, I gave her the connection of John Bry, like to like just to talk to about multi cities and stuff like that on how they might actually run that because it was just really interesting how they're doing that and it's exciting and I love bike trails so I'm really excited that that's going to be happening I guess maybe it'll eventually connect to Indianapolis who knows but um that's super exciting and then um also I met like Greg from Arizona I met a group from Oklahoma they're on Route 66 and it's the anniversary of Route 66 it was so great to hear about their communities and see their murals and we went out to lunch together it was great um I really just love that and I do love getting to spend time with our teams as well it is just a different experience from just trainings and other things like because there is a little extra time to do some things. And I just really appreciated that. So I'll just, I'll be quiet now. <laughs> no, I love that. That's awesome. I think that I agree. It's nice to be able just to sometimes like hang out with each other. And yeah, not, I know for us, it's great. Like we get to just hang out with you guys. There's no, yeah, no, no TA visit, no accreditation visit. We're just there to hang out and have fun and be together and learn. And that's encouraging for us too. So um, I'm seeing some stuff in the chat here. So Carrie was saying, <laughs> She said, like, we all need one more thing to do, but Emily and I were talking about maybe reading Dr. Full Love's book together as a group, which I think would be really, really cool. Um, oh, look, Abby has it. She's showing us on the screen. Yeah, I would say if you um, weren't able to go to conference and haven't ever read any of um, Dr. Mindy Full Love is her name, any of her books, definitely read her stuff. She is, or, or look her up on YouTube, see if any of her talks are on YouTube. She is amazing. Um, you know, she's such a, she's done a ton of research on Main Street and the importance of connections and communities and the literal, like, even looking at the infrastructure of our communities and the people and it's, it's amazing. So, um, Hey, I support a, a fun book club. Maybe just keep it low key. And if you need to take the whole year to give everyone a year to read the book, then that's what you do because you all are very busy. But um, but yes, I love that. And then Heather also said, Kristen and I made friends with Alex from Pittsburgh. Um, we ran into him everywhere. That's super fun. I love that. There, I feel like it was like, even though we were all so spread out, you started to like sometimes see like the same, there'd be like one person that you're like, this person's in like a lot of the same sessions as me, um, which is kind of fun. But, uh, and then Carrie also said, I attended the mental health session with Brandy and Janelle and it was very meaningful. Yeah, that's great. That's nice too. You guys could all probably talk and reflect on your own just roles and um, takeaways from that session. So I love that. 
Um, anyone else? I'll kind of, I think I'll just end with, I know we're, we're at 1240, so if we end early, that's it. Um, I was just, oh, sorry, Abby, were you going to say something? No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, obviously, I, I, if anyone has any other thoughts, please throw it in the chat. But my last kind of, I had a question about, I feel like we kind of addressed this with some of the things you guys were saying during kind of what your favorite sessions were. But um, is there anything that that you haven't maybe already said that you're putting into action kind of right away, like something that you were like, okay, this is maybe like something we can kind of implement here and now, or like you've already kind of discussed with your board that it's going to be a part of your work plans or, or whatever. Um, but anything like that, that anyone wants to, to mention again, I know I already heard a couple of them in your guys's sessions that you said you're already kind of working on some stuff, but. Um, Anne was saying policies and procedures return on emotion was done at our board meeting. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah, I thought the the policies and procedures one I know I already talked about it. But yeah, it's like literally a fill in thing, which is great. Pretty easy to be able to like um get in there and just start changing some stuff for your that applies to your organization. I know Mackenzie talked about them doing the the junior Main Street stuff, kind of starting those conversations and, and looking into that. So that's awesome. Anyone else? If you're like me, I haven't even like, I started to go through my notes, but I, Andrea and Abby and I were saying how we're like, we kind of hit the ground running after we got back from conference. We're like, we need to set some time aside so we can put into our, our own work plans of like things we want to help implement over, you know, from what we learned. So don't don't if you if you haven't even looked at your notes yet, I have no judgment because uh, I know we're all running around. OK, well, then I'll just open it up and if anyone has final thoughts, please go. Oh, go ahead, Abby. So one one question I do have for everybody is um, I've been lucky enough. This was my ninth year or eighth year of this conference, um, and I've never had to like argue to go luckily I've had support but um if we, we I would love to hear like how you guys funded going um and if you had to maybe convince your board to help pay for it or um you know how you were able to to really say like this is a very important conference because I think it's a very important conference obviously but being there so many times um but so that other people maybe who didn't have the chance to go could maybe convince their board to to help pay for it um would love to just hear from you if anybody had that experience or had to kind of convince uh some board members well we put it in the budget every year we have a budget for travel and education so um and we make sure to include enough in our budget that would send somebody to conference. Um, and then also with the scholarships that are available, we took we take advantage of that. So our budget isn't huge, but you know, it kind of helps with with that cost. So um, but yeah, um, teaming up with somebody with the city uh, is a nice um, gig because they can use their city vehicle and you know, if it's somewhere where you can drive. So um, that's kind of a nice bonus too. I know our founding member, Joe LePage, um, he was, he's a community development director. So Main Street's important to him as well. So, um, so brought him along as well. So um, just make sure that you maybe team up with the city and get them involved and then you can have some of those costs defrayed. Yeah, when I oh, I was going to say when no, 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 you're good. I was going to say also when I was a director, I always found a fellow director to split like hotel room costs with. So that's always an idea as well. Like uh, to tell, hey, you know, I don't have to pay the whatever it was, four hundred dollars a night. You know, I, I can only do two. We can do two hundred dollars a night. So like things like that. I was just going to say, definitely take advantage of those scholarship opportunities if you can. I've been fortunate enough um, to receive it um, myself, and that helps cut a lot of expenses. We do also put it in our budget, but I think if you were to advocate for it, it is, you know, you have to look at the bigger picture of this is resources for 
you know, it's much bigger than just your organization, right? Like there's so many people fighting for the same cause. And I think a lot of times I have to vouch for that within my community, just for even our town council to understand, like, we are not just a single organization, like we're accredited with the state and then can be on a national level as well. And, and that's a that's a big deal, you know, there's a lot of resources for your town as well. So, you know, even if your town or um, city can potentially help fund, you know, just a small portion of your travel expenses, it, you know, it goes towards a really good cause. Anyone else on that? Uh, talk about how they funded it. Um, I'm just going to give a couple final reminders. And if anyone has final thoughts, you still have time. Um, so trying to give everyone time <laughs> if you're still processing. But um, uh, one thing I wanted to make note of is that I know I said this in the email, but I know some people were was having issues with accessing stuff off of the app. I would get on the website. I sent it in that link in that email. If you didn't get it, let me know. Um, it's ultimately, I think, up to the presenters whether or not they actually get their stuff in, unfortunately. But if you have their name, look them up, email them. I'm sure most of them are actually happy to send it to you. It's just some of them probably forgot to get it to Main Street America or whatever. Um, so if there's some some resources that they, they promised and you haven't been able to get them, just definitely reach out to them. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention is that, again, for those of you who weren't there, haven't seen, um, next year in 2025, the conference is in Philly. Um, so that will be really fun. Also, not, not too far away. I mean, it's a little bit of a drive, but it's, you know, if you, if you're a driver instead of a flyer, it's definitely possible. Um, and so it's, yeah, I'm really excited. I think it'll be a really fun, um, fun city to, to have the conference in. So, um, as always, like be on the lookout once we, you know, down the line. Um, it's, I believe it's in, is it March next year or is it April? April. Okay. Yeah. So April of 2025. Um, so obviously prior to that, you know, we will send out stuff for scholarships. They're usually like, I know this year we kind of tried to focus on bringing in more board members um, to come, which I, we had a lot of board members attend this year. So that was super exciting and just great to be able to help because I always think it's, it's helpful for board members to see that that large network too and just be able to kind of feel that investment that they're making um, as well so oh, April 6th to 9th thank you Emily um, yes so and then also Lexi in the chat said the city ultimately covered my registration fee and I paid for everything else getting some travel costs covered in the future would be cool yeah, ideally, it's great if you do not have to pay for <laughs> any of it because it is a, a educational, you know, for your role. But um, I'm glad at least the city was able to cover your registration fee. So, so, yeah, if you have more unique ideas on how, you know, you've gone about trying to fund some of that stuff, definitely, like, let us know so we can share that with other people. Um especially some of our newer organizations that are getting established that want to come and maybe they're still getting established in their own communities, um, you know, and kind of having to make the case. Um, they might, you know, want some tips and tricks on how you, you went about having those conversations with, um, with people. So, or your board or the city or whoever. Um, but yeah, I think that's really all I had. So I'm going to give it one last opportunity. <laughs> if anyone has any thoughts on any of the questions that we've thrown out today, um, I'll leave a moment to if anyone wants to, and if not, we'll wrap up. Just one last thing that I wanted to yeah. say. So um, I went to the one before in Boston, and I just want to say, like, completely different experience my second time around for anybody, like, it being your first conference, and maybe you didn't feel like you knew anybody, and you, I somewhat felt alone in Boston just because I was by myself. I didn't really know our Indiana Main Street community very well either, um, but a complete game changer this year because I feel like I knew a lot more um, communities. It did help that we hosted a community exchange, but um, I don't know if it was just being in the South, potentially being in <laughs> Alabama, but um, yeah. I don't know. It's just, it really is the second time you go around where you know what you're doing. I just want to say like, it's a completely um, different world. So I felt really rejuvenated after um, this conference. So good. 
Good. I'm glad. Yeah. Thanks for saying that, Janelle. I definitely think that that's true. And something that like we try to do and maybe even next year, I'll try to be even more intentional about is like in the prep leading up to it. If you're, um, gonna come by yourself, maybe just like, maybe I'll have you guys email me ahead of time and let me know that way I can kind of intentionally maybe connect all the people that are going by themselves. So I can be like, Hey, this is the other people and you can hang out with them at the conference and, you know, kind of make some of those connections more naturally. Cause yeah, we definitely, we don't want anyone to feel like they're like, I mean, honestly, last year was my first, like, in person. I went to the virtual conference during COVID, but it was my first in person conference. So, like, I feel like I was figuring it out too and, like, feeling it out and what what all the whole process was. So, um, I agree with you that it it was even better this year because I felt like I understood more of just the whole flow of it. But, um, but I love that. Yeah. And maybe next year, I know we had a group chat, but we weren't supposed to respond to that chat. Yep. Um, so I didn't have phone numbers of the people that I wanted to, you know, chat with. So maybe yep. next year we had like a, a list with the person's name, the main street and their phone number so that we could potentially be able to reach out to that person, you know, yep. while we're at the conference. Cause it was like, Oh, I'd love to have dinner with. So, you know, with yes. so-and-so, um, to talk further, but I didn't have any phone numbers or anything like that. Yes, that is a great idea. Um, yes, thank you. I know this year we were like, okay, we'll do a group chat this year. And then I was like, I just don't want people to be like, Abby, you <laughs> you blew up my phone all week. Because um, I know people get really touchy about that, which I understand. Um, so yes, that's a great idea. Um, and we can certainly like, you know, I, I threw out like, I was thinking of like ideas of like, you know, there's all these different apps you can use of like, you know, group, like group me and some of those other apps, but I didn't want to make everyone download an app because also people don't like that. Um, but that's a good idea. I will definitely provide the phone numbers. So that way, at least everyone has kind of a directory of who's going to be there um, and can easily get in contact with each other. So I love that. Any other suggestions of things we can do better to prep prior to conference? That's a very natural question that I did not have written down, but should have asked. So if anyone else has any other ideas that um, could be helpful leading up, please either you can say something now or email me. Um, we always want to continue to make it the most seamless experience for anyone who's who's making the trek to go to conference. So just some tips for next year um make sure you get your hotel rooms early if you yeah. missed out on conference hotels which i don't know i heard some of the like not conference hotels were pretty good so <laughs> ours was loud <laughs> so um but yeah it, I just want to say, like, thank you all for attending, and I, I had a great time, mostly because of everybody from from Indiana that was there. <laughs> Agreed. Yes, that was a good tip. Yeah, we hotels went really fast this year, and like, so just keeping your eye on that when registration gets released. Um, yeah, it's important. So. Um, also, for those of you who didn't go to Main Street now and are planning to come to Preserving Historic Places, or if you just are planning to go to both conferences, um, that's October 22nd through the 25th um, in Madison. So that'll be super fun. Um, and I know Madison's really excited to host that conference. Um, it's you know, definitely a, a larger focus on historic preservation, but it's a great conference that we we get to talk a lot about. I think the way that historic preservation and Main Street come together um, and get to, you know, really kind of using that as that economic development tool. Um, so just, yeah, you'll see um, emails from me once uh, once we release registration for, for that. But excited to see some of you at that conference as well. And with that, we will go ahead and close. Um, yeah, thank you everyone for your thoughts, for being on today. This was such a great discussion and really great to just hear some of your reflections. So hope everyone has a great rest of their Wednesday and we'll talk to you all soon. Bye everyone.